that I, I since I was a younger kid, I kind of had an idea that this was all going to be my life because I just couldn't see myself working at McDonald's. Hobson is best known for his complex lyrical style, where many has compared him to Eminem, and rightfully so, because he credits Eminem to being one of his biggest influences. But over time, he's created his own unique style. Now, though he's revealed quite a bit of his life story during interviews, as well as his Ill Mind of Hobson series, there may be still some things that you may not know. So, here are some facts on Hobson. All right, so before I jump right into things, I wanna know from you guys, what are you actively doing right now to achieve your goals and dreams? Go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below. And using that same comment section, let me know who or what you'd like me to find some interesting facts about next. All right, so let's get right into it. 10 interesting facts about Hobson. Hobson's real name is Marcus Jamal Hobson, spelled H-O-P-S-O-N, and he was born July 18th, 1985 in California. Now it's said that while growing up, he was placed in special ed classes while attending James Monroe High School. And this is where he started playing around with rap music, and in 2004, he quit high school to start his music career. Now while in high school, he started making beats using Fruity Loops and bought an $8 microphone at Walmart. Now he said that in between making beats, he would study the careers of successful artists to really understand what it took to be successful in the music business. Now in 2007, he was signed to Easy es record label, Ruthless Records, which is ran by Easy es wife, Tamika Wright. Now Hobson then later left Ruthless Records due to lack of financial compensation, artist support, and marketing. Now Hobson is not just a rapper, he's actually dabbled in some acting, where he's had his fair share of screen time on films and on television. He's been in films as an extra in movies like John Tucker Must Die and Fame. He's also been in quite a bit of television shows like Lizzie McGuire, Gilmore Girls, and several others. In 2009, Hobson and Damien Ritter founded an independent record label called Funk Volume. That same year, he released a mixtape underneath the label called Haywire. Now, unlike a lot of the other big rappers that talk about drugs, sex, and alcohol, Hobson says that he tries to do the opposite. Now, as a matter of fact, he criticizes how a lot of the mainstream artists promotes a lot of these kinds of things to the youth. And he claims that he's personally never drank, smoked, or used recreational drugs. Now, whether that's true or not, who knows? But I'll take him by his word. Now, according to an interview with Vlad TV, Hobson revealed that he became a millionaire when he was about 27 or 28 years old. And his goal was to become a millionaire before he reached the age of 30. So, mission accomplished. Now, he once revealed on his Instagram account that he was leaving the rap game, which got a lot of his fans concerned as to what was really going on with Hobson. Now, later, after the announcement on December 25th, 2014, he revealed that he was not leaving the rap game and that it was more of a publicity stunt to announce his upcoming album called Pound Syndrome, which was released back in 2015. Now, back in August of 2015, Hobson was arrested in Orlando for disorderly conduct. And this is over an issue at a popular nightclub called Club 57 West. Now, the whole thing started when promoters pulled the opening act to his show, which apparently upset the artist. And to try to defuse the whole issue, Hobson said that he would give up at least 20 minutes of his set, where later on, things escalated and Hobson was held for disorderly conduct. Now, later on, when Hobson commented on the whole thing, he said that the police was racist. Now just to touch a little bit extra on this story, Hobson said that he was not part of whatever fight was going on. He just tried to defuse the whole thing by offering his set. But of course because he was in the middle of the whole thing, the police thought that he was a part of the problem and took him along. So I just wanted to point that out. Now back in January of 2016, Hobson revealed on Instagram that Funk Volume is officially dead. Now this is due to an ongoing feud that he has with his business partner, Damien Ritter. And there were apparently financial problems and issues and people not pulling their weight and I watched the interview and it got pretty interesting. So Hobson found it best to call it quits. He officially then left Funk Volume to start his own record label called Undercover Prodigy. And just like that, there goes another episode. So please do me a big favor and give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel. And if you guys want to find me on social media, I'm available on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Google+. And I'm also on Instagram. And feel free to browse around my channel because you'll find some pretty interesting content about YouTube news as well as some facts on stuff. So go ahead and browse my channel, be free, do whatever. And that's pretty much it. This video's a wrap. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.